Like with all movie tropes, there is fun to be had in changing things up a little. The same is true of those often balmy and gruesome delights known as zombie flicks. As filmmakers have clamoured for years to make their own mark on the long-established horror genre. Sometimes this leads to absolute disaster, but on certain occasions the innovations actually work. I know I'm as shocked as you are. Messing with such a famous format was a big risk, but this lot made it work. So I am Gareth, this is What Culture Horror, and here are 10 genius ways zombie movies broke all the rules. Number 10. Zombie Comedy King of the Zombies On paper, there really isn't much humour in reanimated corpses rampaging through the streets and devouring people with reckless bloodlust. But in 1941, somebody found a way. That somebody was director Gene Yabra, who brought the world King of the Zombies, regarded by many as the very first zombie comedy. A zomcom, if you will. The plot revolves around the survivors of a plane crash, who take refuge in a secluded mansion owned by a mysterious doctor and his wife. There, they discover that the doctor has been experimenting with zombie rituals. And it's up to this plucky group of heroes to save the day. Sounds hilarious, right? In reality, this film is skewed towards comedy way more than it is towards spooks and Yabra finds ways to make the walking cadavers funny. Contemporary audiences got a kick out of it, and the movie was even nominated for an Oscar for Best Music. What's your favourite zombie? Hey, you let me know in the comments section down below. Number 9. Just One Zombie – It Stains the Sands Red One of the most terrifying things about zombies is that they usually travel in giant hordes, overwhelming everything and everyone in their path. Surely they'd be easier to deal with if they travelled alone, right? Not according to this film from 2016, they wouldn't. It Stains the Sands Red has a cast list of just five people, and really only two of them are truly relevant. The main character is Molly, played by Brittany Allen, a woman attempting to flee the United States when she encounters a lone zombie that she nicknames Smalls. Cue Smalls relentlessly pursuing Molly through the desert on foot. This doesn't sound particularly dangerous, I know. Zombies are notoriously slow, but Smalls doesn't give up, leaving Molly constantly looking over her shoulder. Molly also encounters some people along the way, but in true apocalypse fashion, they end up being worse than the walkers. Typical. This is a really clever and simple spin on a formula that had been driven into the ground by this point, without compromising on any of what makes this genre so thrilling. Number 8. One Big Ruse – Unhuman Imagine how relieved you'd be to find out that the zombie apocalypse that was apparently unfolding around you was all just one big prank by your classmates. Maybe relieved isn't really the right word. How about Furious? That's the scenario of the movie Unhuman, which was produced by Blumhouse Television in 2022. A group of school kids are on a field trip when, suddenly, a group of zombies attack, forcing them to go on the run. In reality, this is all the plot of two downtrodden students who have created a drug to make people appear zombified. They use their concoction to engineer this entire situation so that they could be the heroes and earn the respect of their peers. This is a lot of effort just to get a couple of prom dates. Unhuman turns the zombie premise completely on its head by showing its main characters acting like they're in danger, when in fact they are completely safe. In the end, the zombies aren't a threat at all, as the remaining kids turn their ire towards the boys who orchestrated this whole charade. Number 7. A Sympathetic Zombie – Colin Colin, a British indie movie from 2008, gained notoriety for apparently being produced on a budget of just £45. That normally wouldn't get you a decent pair of sneakers, let alone an entire film. The title refers to a character played by Alistair Curtin, who begins the story by fending off his zombified housemate before he himself gets transformed. Yet another reason why shared living sucks, folks. Now a mindless monster, Colin roams the streets of London, which are deserted due to the outbreak. Along the way, he runs into his sister Linda, who instead of killing him, attempts to rehabilitate her brother. By following Colin on his journey, the film makes him out to be an extremely sympathetic figure. It's not his fault he got turned into an emotionless, bloodthirsty husk. In fact, it is revealed later that Colin was only transformed because he was trying to save his girlfriend from getting bitten. What a nice guy, eh? Number 6. Child Protagonist – Little Monsters Trying to stay alive during a zombie outbreak has got to be one of the most stressful experiences ever. So imagine having to do it whilst also looking after a bunch of snotty kids. Little Monsters from 2019 stars Lupita Nyong'o as Miss Audrey Caroline, a kindergarten teacher and the object of out-of-work musician Dave's affections. 
Whilst on a school trip with Dave as chaperone, the two discover something pretty darn horrible. One of the kids hasn't filled in their permission slip. Oh, and also a bunch of zombies have escaped a nearby testing facility and are on the loose. Cue Audrey and Dave doing their darndest to keep their little brats alive whilst also finding time to fall in love with each other. Little Monsters balances a lot of different plot points, resulting in a fun, multi-layered experience that isn't just about shooting zombies in the face. Oh, and Josh Gad, Olaf from Frozen, is also in the film, as a children's entertainer with a secret alcohol problem, just in case the heroes weren't dealing with enough already. Cheers for checking out this video today, folks. Smash that subscribe button down below for more what culture horror in your undead life. Number 5. Slow Burn Zombie Rock Rom-com Life After Beth The zombie romantic comedy, the Zom Rom-com if you will, did not start with 2014's Life After Beth. Take something like Warm Bodies, a zombie take on Romeo and Juliet. That was released the year before, and even that was based on a book from 2010. What sets this movie out from the rest is that the eponymous Beth, played by Aubrey Plaza, doesn't begin the film as a dilapidated flesh creature. Instead, Beth is in a relationship with Zack, though not for long as she dies after getting bitten by a snake whilst on a hiking trip. Zack is understandably upset, but that changes when his beloved returns from the dead, seemingly alive and well, seemingly, leading her bow to make a heart-wrenching decision. Does he attempt to weather the storm or let his decomposing darling go? With a stellar supporting cast including John C. Riley, Cheryl Hines, and Anna Kendrick, Life After Beth is a fun spin on an already innovative genre. Number 4. Infected by Language Pontypool Zombies spread their infection via biting people, everyone knows that. So if you don't want to get turned, then just don't get bitten. It's as simple as that. Until, well, it isn't. Pontypool, which is sadly set in Canada and not Wales, was released in 2008 and centers on a local radio DJ played by Stephen McCarty. Grant Mazzy, a shock jock type, is broadcasting one day when, all of a sudden, a warning comes through about a group of cannibalistic rioters nearby. The warning is in French. This is the genius of Pontypool. People don't become infected by being bitten or scratched or even touched. The disease travels via the English language. Only certain words or phrases are affected, but the main characters don't know that at the start of the film. Weaponizing something as simple as language, which most people use every day without thinking about it, is a surefire way to generate terror. And Pontypool certainly isn't short of that. Number 3. A Zombie Movie Within a Zombie Movie – One Cut of the Dead Hailing from Japan, One Cut of the Dead is a fascinating film for many different reasons. Firstly, this 2017 movie was shot mostly using long takes. One such shot lasted a reported 37 minutes, which is absolutely bonkers. Secondly, the premise of One Cut of the Dead is that a film director has been approached to make a zombie movie. Only due to budget constraints, he has to do it in one take. The first portion of the film depicts this fictional story within a story, as the frustrated director turns to black magic for help. He accidentally raises the dead in the process, leading to all-out chaos on the set. Later scenes play out like a documentary, capturing the stressful process of shooting a film under these circumstances. This makes it nigh on impossible to properly categorize one cut of the dead, but the main thing is that it's fascinating to watch. Number 2. Fast Zombies – Nightmare City When it comes to innovations in the zombie cinema sphere, few are as legendary as the creation of so-called fast zombies. The transformation of the creatures from slow, lumbering beasts into agile hunters completely changes the dynamic of any zombie, giving the flesh munchers even more of an advantage over their human prey. A number of films have taken credit for this invention. The truth is that this accolade belongs to a little-known Italian film from 1980. Nightmare City, or City of the Walking Dead as it was known in the US, opens on a reporter waiting at an airport. When a plane lands and unloads an army of zombies, these bodies are intelligent, armed, and lightning fast, as they rip through the city at a frightening pace. This was the first time zombies had been portrayed as anything but mindless ghouls. And it was absolutely terrifying. Technically, the antagonists are humans infected via radiation, therefore they're not actually zombies. But if you're gonna be pedantic, then go and do it somewhere else. Number 1. The One That Started It All – Night of the Living Dead While the first movie to feature the creatures is generally considered to be 1932's White Zombie, 
the one that set in motion so many of the tropes that are still popular today, is George A. Romero's 1968 masterpiece Night of the Living Dead. White Zombie portrayed the creatures in the traditional Haitian manner, as products of voodoo magic. Romero was the first filmmaker to popularize them as reincarnated corpses, hungry for blood and brains as they walk the streets. This time, there was no magical human in control of the minions. These were completely independent creatures that had to be taken out one by one, which only made them more of a menace. The most incredible thing of all is that Romero never once referred to his creations as zombies in the script, instead opting to call them ghouls. He did this to differentiate them from the Haitian myths. But now the word has come to define everything he presented in this groundbreaking piece of horror cinema.